Touch, cancer, um, pain, different rushes, all sorts of classical conditions. Some are, are completely uncurable, and uh, there is a lot of. There is uh, some of that on the, is on, the, on on YouTube. There is a book, and um, I ordered the book. I didn't arrive yet, but in the website, so these are real people who talk on the video. I saw that video. It's like about an hour of the video. And I trust these people are kind of trustworthy looking. Some of them, these two are famous Israeli actors. Um, and then uh, there is a list of about uh, 50, 60 people with uh, names and photographs. And I emailed to this email, all of these emails. And But this like list is a little outdated, so I got an answer only from one person. And I called her. And uh, I took an interview for an hour, and it sounds real to me. Israel sounds real. Uh, so they have, again, I mean, we are under quarantine, so they are not allowed to show themselves until we are, the quarantine ends, which, by the way, ends at the end of the year. So after that, they will be allowed to show themselves. Uh, Bashar said it doesn't mean that they will show up right away. They have to still to, to see that we are ready. And he said the fact that 10,000 people saw Phoenix lights and nobody really knows about it is, means that we are not ready yet. And when you talk to people uninvolved, we are not ready yet. But we are getting closer, we are getting closer. So, um, so, so now in Israel they can treat people because it doesn't uh, prevent anything, it doesn't e expose themselves. People just become healthier. and. Uh, and um, there is no leak of extraterrestrial information in that. Also, they don't give you technologies, they just heal people without giving you weapons. Because if you teach us how to heal, you also can and give the technology, you also can create technology how to kill as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing um, that interviewer, uh, 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 Hiller said that, uh, I interviewed her in Russian, uh, she speaks decent Russian because she originally from Russia but forgot some of that. Uh, she says that not everybody can be healed. That's an important thing. Uh, some uh, disorders are karmic. The soul, when it incarnates here, it signs a contract. We know that from many sources. It does not necessarily sign a paper, in, in a paper, but it's like, uh, is guided by guides and takes takes the certain path and certain lessons. And sometimes these lessons involve disorders like being uh, incapacitated in some things. And that can uh, and the aliens cannot intervene with that. But in many cases, it's more like we just treat our bodies not as well as good. And and that's that's okay to to be healed uh, if if it's not in the program. So, um, yeah, the Syrians, and uh, I, I was actually able to, yeah, I was actually able to ask a question. If I want to have my clinic, can I? She, so she said, I don't know, but I can ask them. She asked them, and they said, we are more interested in technologies and experience and research than in healing people. I said, all right. <laughs> all right. I, I guess that that was... I wasn't sure what I'm interested in, but, but that was part, I guess. They, they didn't, so I didn't qualify. So what medical technology? So when I talk all that talk about abductions, uh, typical abduction ends up, uh, an abductee ends up on the surgical table and they do stuff. They do checkups, they do uh, insertion of uh, uh, implants, controlling implants or um, tracking implants and um, uh, again, implantation of how do they do hybrids? They um, do uh, take uh, sperm and eggs, do their manipulation, crisscrossing things in uh, in their in vitro things, and then they very often they implant the baby back to the woman, uh, let her carry for a short while, not very long, but it's ne it's necessary for the for the babies, at least on the earlier stage of the hybridization program, it was necessary for the babies to be in utero and in, in human to be alive. And then they take it out and then grow the baby, uh, the, the, the fetus in, the, in their incubators. 
Now when they have lots of um, uh, hybrids up there, and the first hybrids couldn't, couldn't really survive on Earth because they were designed for the condition. Uh, they weren't, uh, the hybrids didn't really, weren't adjusted for Earth conditions. But then they um, inbreed humans with, uh, with the hybrids, so coming closer to Earth conditions. So the recent hybrids, some of the hybrids <coughs> can really stay here for a short while or for a long while. And again, the book, The Thread, is, is great when you see the hybrid coming. Some of, the, of them have uh, so-called personal projects, which were they allowed to, to um, have sex with uh, typically male, hybrid males with earthly females. And typically it's like for a long period, they kind of lifelong um, partnership. So the females, at least when one story they tell that the, uh, she really, she didn't care much about the sex, but she really loved the stare, this eye stare, eyes to eyes, it kind of lifted her to high reality and she really loved that, that stare more than anything of, of a hybrid. Uh, and and that, that's a known thing that hybrids can control us. Their mind is stronger, they have a bigger brain, they are from higher energetic level and when they look into your eyes they can kind of take it over. Um, I don't think that something is radiated physically, I don't think it's light coming from the eyes. I think it's just, you see that I see you, that you see me, that I see you, that kind of connection, plus under something under or above the reality, a non-physical connection, that what makes it uh, work. But then they kind of control you if they look at you. So the stare is a big thing. A very advanced, so what they do, they're very advanced light in sound therapy, so they can manipulate things with light, we know for sure, uh, they can take a cow and lift it to the ship, it's very often, they. so why do they abduct, uh, so these cows, are they, in early stage of the hybridization program, the um, mutilation, cow mutilation. So Bashar explains that the, uh, as humans and as we in our laboratories, we use uh, uh, bovine serum to grow cells, animal cells. It's good for human cells as well. Uh, same thing, the, the grays that didn't have the serum, they have the feed, didn't have the feeding media, media for their cell culture work. So they just abducted the cows and extracted whatever needed the substances. And he says the cows are very close to humans in some bad chemical ways. That's why their serum is compatible. So uh, now, by now, by now they don't do it anymore because they already have enough. Uh, they can create their own uh, medium, I guess, and they don't need as many uh, mutilations. So we don't hear anymore about many. Mutilations. But in the past, it was a big deal. So um, light, 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 and sound therapy. People report sound as a typical part of abduction experience. It's kind of uh, controls and trains and trains like entrainment is when uh, one vibration causes another vibration to match it by frequency. So the entrainment by some low frequency and high frequency, high pitch vibrations of the mind. Energy work with etheric body. So uh, that's what many sources confirm. We, we have it in human uh, alternative medicine. We also know it from channelers and and Bashar again confirms that, that uh, our physical body is matched by a theory body, which pretty much looks like our body. It's, it's a blueprint in other dimension. Uh, Bashar names it a template dimension. Basically, things before they manifest in our physical reality, they <coughs> exist in a theory template dimension. And sometimes the work is done, uh, healing, especially by grace or their manipulation can be done in uh, they don't, uh, sometimes they abduct the, the physical human, sometimes they just take the etheric body and work on the etheric body. And the healers as well, people describe how they see work done on the etheric body by, uh, and with the etheric body you can do much more, you can open the brain, put something in the brain, close it, but it still, it looks like a human, it's like a blueprint, something, something um, etheric I guess. So, uh, uh, etheric body surgery, physical body surgery, they, they certainly do physical body surgery, uh, hypnosis, uh, uh, artificial organs, um, that's from uh, Dvir, Dvir book and Dvir movie, they take uh, some cells from a uh, uh, damaged liver, grow the new liver elsewhere and just replace it. Um, human medicine is close to that, but, but I saw ears growing. Not from scratch, but you can cul culture the, the organs which are taken from corpses uh, from, and uh, keep them alive. 
So, so we're close to that, but um, I think what, we, what the medicine and biology is missing is the light component. I have to be able to support not only the chemistry, you have to support the, the energy, the life energy flow through the organ. Um, uh, stem cell therapy, so sometimes, um, again, as human do, uh, humans do, you have to replace uh, sick cancer cells um, in, in the blood or in the immune system with a healthy cell, they can do that. Very advanced drugs, crystals. Uh, Bashar mentions a lot of uh, alien technologies involved in crystals and sound. He says that, by the way, the pyramids, the Egyptian pyramids and other, uh, were cut by uh, some kind of crystal sound technology where you have crystal radiate sound and it cuts the, the stone. Uh, levitation of the stones is a different story, but cutting cr by, by crystals, uh, humans have the technology, but it's not as advanced. So. When it comes to healing, alternative medicine works with, with, with crystals, but uh, there is much more. Metatron is one of the channels who talks a lot about crystals and, uh, and sound, and um, there is a lot to learn from there. Unfortunately, I'm not that, I'm, I, I, I can ask the question, I don't know the answers yet. I, I, crystals and sound is one of my biggest interests. Uh, very advanced drugs, people was, um, uh, a typical, typically, very often, not always, but very often, and tactics are given a blue heavy liquid to drink before they're taken. That helps uh, change the, the dimension basically, helps the transfer. Also the paralysis, Bashar explained many times that, um, so that's a very consistent explanation, that paralysis is needed for you to be taken. Basically when the grace, these clumsy beings come and take you, uh, they have to paralyze you to be able to transport you from our dimension to other dimension. If you're not paralyzed, the technology is such that they can lose you uh, because it's kind of transfer between dimensions. If you move, you kind of can end up in a dimension which is not the destination, not the source, and because you, unlike uh, like, like they, you can't navigate in these dimensions, you'll be lost for, for them and for this reality. You will be kind of dead here. So this paralysis is absolutely needed for them to, to transfer back and forth. So that's why they, you know, even contactees who are volunteers, they still have to be paralyzed to, to be transferred. Once a woman asked her about Bashar about uh, an experience where the beings surrounded her and started dancing with her. And uh, she was a young girl and they, she, she liked the dance, she, they were very joyful. But at some point they started spinning very fast and they asked, she asked them to stop and it didn't happen. So they keep spinning faster and faster and they gripped her hands very strongly and didn't let her go. And she was very offended by their behavior. And Bashar said, we apologize. What happened is that the technology didn't work and you started spinning. And we had to hold you so we don't lose you. So that's the reason. Otherwise, it was, it was done for your protection. Not personally by Bashar, but it was... Um, kind of uh, a group associated with his, I guess, gray consciousness. <coughs> so, um, uh, human cloning and hybridization, they're great in that. They can create clones and hybrids. Soul transfer, there was one account where Dan Burish, the one which was about two timelines, said that he was kind of blue collar, not very talented, boy and he was taken to the ship because as a control as typical population control and at that point there was a son of one of the top illuminati number one uh, r1 r r r r so mj12 mj1 mj1 illuminati the son was taken there and he was dying by some reason it was a mistake something happened so he was dying and they didn't do anything, they didn't find anything better than put the soul of the top Illuminati, top uh, controller of the world, human, this, uh, this his son into uh, Dan Burish's body. So he has basically two souls together, I guess. Mm -hmm. After that, immediately he started to excel in uh, sciences. He started doing all different sort of classes and um, he's now uh, advanced, advanced in sciences and he was very respected by Illuminati and kind of Killed uh, in life very carefully, and uh, that's why he was allow allowed to pre be present at um, MJ MJ12 alien meeting. Uh, that sounds like a believable story to me. So soul transfer is another manipulation of reality and time. Uh, if I have time, I will uh, 
I can manipulate it. So, but if I have time, I will, I will um, talk a little more. Uh, so uh, that's a nice kind of accomplishment. Uh, I spoke about action, except I spoke about alien medicine, not much about energy medicine. But uh, I, I put everything in the beginning of this. Uh, there is more slides, but I put everything in the beginning of the thing. Uh, so now let me. Um, uh, so what was interesting to me, I made an invention uh, four years ago, and I started a company. Nothing happened because again I understood I can't really work by my own. I have to have um, uh, other people, and I have to be authorized. You can't really do it, especially in America. You can't really invent something in uh, light therapy and and. Uh, and do it by yourself. And so far, I, was, I failed. And I uh, asked the psychic if um, if I have a chance. He said, "Is and I ask him if uh, does anyone psychics are the people who uh, can talk to other dimensions? I guess no, no, no. Psychics are can the people only who can tell you your past, present, and future. A medium speaks with spirit and other okay. Big difference." Past, present, okay, so the psychic was, I was asking uh, about yeah. about past, past, present, and future, I guess. And he, he was a nice one, uh, and I uh, asked him, will I ever, uh, so how can I find the people who work on that, on the light therapy? And he said, government. <laughs> Do I have a chance to work with them? <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, I just kind of rolls, wrapped up. Um. All right, so so that was the idea, and now I think that it it might be wrong. But, but I was given that idea; it kind of came to me. I was looking for the answer: How do you do light therapy? And I was in the DNA and genes, and you know every cell has three billion, three gigabases of DNA, and we know the sequence of all these three gigabases. It's all available on the internet, and and that's a great achievement. But what do we do with that sequence? Um, we want to manipulate it with light somehow. We want to Select out of the three billion bases a gene and activate it. And we need like activate good gene, which is needed in that part of the body, and deactivate the bad gene. Like favorite aspirin uh, COX-2 inhibitors, they uh, inhibit COX-2 gene. That's what they do. Tylenol. Uh, uh, and um, so, so that's typical drugs activate or repress certain genes. And I want to do laser drugs, so how do I make a laser drug? So my idea was, how about we send the on to a DNA in light, in different light colors, and we send one base of DNA at a time, like just go through DNA, walk, la 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 la. And there is only four bases of DNA, A, G, C, T. So how about we pick a sequence of a gene we want to activate, and uh, each base would be a different color, and we uh, send that song. So that's my movie, which I made at that time. So that's how like, we send the C, so all C's jump, we send uh, a G, all G's jump, we send something else, all T's jump. So it's just one at a time. Now, if you, in the DNA you know that the energy absorbed by one base is split to the neighbor. So when you excite one, the neighbors get something. So that was another idea, which, which you kind of, we know that happens. And then if we send a song, uh, like light song, Sequentially. Now it will start happening for real. You see, you activate this one, activate this one, and you create a wave going through the gene. And that's how you kind of shake the gene and wake it up. That's If we can act, uh, just shake up a certain gene, you either break it, which is a great achievement, if you can break bad gene, or if you can activate it by uh, just energizing it, it would be another good achievement. So that was my idea. I don't know if it's real. Uh, I spoke to different people and... Uh, and uh, Where's the T? The red ones were T's. Huh? G C T. What? The red ones were T's. The red ones were T's. Red ones. They were, they were T. <coughs> All right. Uh, um, so the, the, the theory showed that uh, the equipment to send with proper speed would be too expensive. And if I send it to slow, then I really will have, I had to like collaborate really well. I did design a slow instrument that didn't work. And to create a fast instrument, I spoke to 
uh, the, at that time, the director of Optics Institute, he was interested, but he didn't want to put his money into that. I mean, if, if he was given that, he would use it, but, uh, but not the other way around. So, uh, no, nothing happened. And now I, I also think maybe another option, Bashar mentions and Pleiadians mentioned in their channeling that, that maybe you don't have to send one base at a time. Maybe you can create out of light, you create the whole sequence, the whole gene, maybe 20 bases or 100 bases, and send all 100 bases kind of, you can structure light. Optics can structure light. I don't know how much you can structure it, but the thing, uh, create DNA out of light, not the whole complexity of it, but, but at least the, sh the general shape of AGCT, the sequence, and then send it to the body. It should be possible, and I'm sure no one in uh, a non-secret world, an open world, no one is working on it at the moment. I'm sure I know that. I, I, I keep track of literature. So that would be another option. So either sending one basis in the, in the time or the whole shape of the gene into the body and try to talk to the cells, say, hey, gene, wake up and do what you're supposed to do. That's the story. So, um, so that's when I said learning energy medicine from extraterrestrials. The Pleiadians and Bashar mentioned light therapy and uh, activating of DNA. Uh, not only human people, human healers talk about DNA activation. Um, there is a much talk all about 12-stranded DNA. Not, I'm sure it's 100% clear. It's not 12-stranded wrapped. It's not like 12-stranded. So there is um, two strands of DNA. Yes. You can fit one more but not, not, not anymore, I'm sure 100%. And when I listen carefully to these talks uh, from, uh, from higher beings about multiple strands, they clearly say it's not in our physical world. Two strands here, two strands in the etheric body, and few more strands in higher level uh, layers of higher realities. And uh, properly functioning angelic beings like Lemurians of the happy times and of the past. They had, it's all well connected. Their physical strands were uh, structurally resonant, in resonance with the uh, higher levels and that made them live longer and be more powerful. Uh, we are in a messy situation when, I think we are resonating with the etheric body because I think that is happening, but, but our next step in evolution is to extend our our uh, connection to higher levels of strengths. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, uh, uh, did scientists prove that uh, supernatural events exist? Yes, Dean Radin summarizes huge mass of research, especially British scientists, especially French. They put lives, in the past century, lots of research done, proven statistically, scientifically, that there is supernatural phenomena, there are <coughs> supernatural phenomena. And experiments are very simple, like um, Sheldrake, one of the leaders in, uh, in that area, he designs very simple experiments with lots of participants, like with uh, premonition of who is calling, people can guess who is calling and when. So very simple experience like that, but statistically well designed so you can really prove that that works. So, so th that's the best review I found so far. So yes, yeah, supernatural things exist. And what was his name again, I'm sorry. Dean Radin. Dean Radin. Dean Radin. Thank you. Yep. So I have a few of his books and I I really appreciate that some people put effort to uh, prove that. So after that, after all you learned, uh, channeling is the next step. So abductees, contactees is a great source of information, but they really have a chance to ask questions. Channeling is through a medium, who typically trans channeling, who gets into trance and talks. Uh, higher being talks like an alien can talk to us. And there is tons of them. And uh, there we can ask questions. And the typical seance of channeling, channeling is where the higher being first gives you a kind of a preaching lecture and then asks questions, and ask, and answers questions. Um, any good actor can imitate channeler's behavior very well. So the, all the strange voices, strange um, 
kind of disbalanced things, unusual things can be mimicked by an actor. But uh, there is clearly a difference in personality and uh, a clearly uh, a downshift in human social skills. Typically, people, the aliens who talk to us, they really don't understand our habits, common, commonly, uh, common um, uh, behavior patterns, common uh, social conventions, very social conventions. So, so it's for Bashar. That is uncle who channels Bashar. When you and, and he talk, talks channels for 25 years. When you watch Daryl Anka speak, now he went public. He he made a movie, not not about Bashar. He's typical American. He wouldn't allow himself many things which Bashar did. The big chance room. He's many many very often he's like counterproductive because he's too rude and his jokes jokes are too lame. I guess. And this lameness of the jokes of the higher being. I guess is one of the best proof that he is not a fake because his cha his uh, human counterpart, channel counterpart, he won't allow himself that. And also, he is so brilliant, Bashar is so brilliant that um, it's really hard to fake brilliance, I guess, and the speed with, with which he answers. And when he starts to, to, to answer, only in a few minutes you understand that the whole answer he knew from the very beginning. So that's the thing. Now, uh, why the, then the channelers, why the channels are off very often. Uh, that's a huge question. I, I'm coming to the main message of the channelers, but really, uh, why they, they are so wrong? Like the, the most screaming example was very recent. There is a beautiful, wonderful Steve, Steve Be Beckoff. Steve Beckoff, one of the leaders of uh, New Age community, talking about 2012 Ascension. He's, I, I really like him, I really respect his opinion. And, he is, we, we are kind of studying the same things. Uh, he's famous, I'm not, but, but we are talking about the same things. And recently, his favorite, he has his own kind of personal channel who he respects very much. His channel said to him that, okay, you want to go to a visit to a ship next week on Saturday, we'll take 20 people who volunteer, we'll take them. So Steve said, Okay, all right, we'll go. Do we need to bring cameras? Uh, no, no, we'll provide the cameras. Really? And uh, then we have to download it to the computer. Would there be uh, an inter Yes, we'll provide the interface. All right. So he published that on his blog. And it took me half an hour to realize that I want to sign up to, I was like about 50th in the, in the uh, list of volunteers. And there were like a thousand of volunteers. Everybody wanted to go. Um, it was about a month ago. And Steve said, I don't know if it will happen, but I'll put my name on it. I trust that channel. I trust the Galactic Federation representative. If he was like a president of something. Um, if that doesn't happen, I will, um, um, what's it word, resign. So, uh, like two days before that, there was another channeler, much more realistic one. and. He was asked, will, will still be of go? And he said, for Steve, it will be a lesson on resilience. Mm -hmm. For Steve, it will be a lesson on resilience. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened, of course. Nothing happened. There was no way, even explanation why they didn't take anyone. For Steve, it was a lesson for resilience. Now he is back after a month. He is again, uh, but he is much more careful about uh, accepting the channel messages. So um, why they are so often wrong? Like the first prediction of three days of darkness, mass landing, uh, reform in governments was uh, a big prediction was for nine, 1993 by Needle, Sheldon Nidal and Saluza. And nothing happened. We have to go, I'm oh, sorry. Thank you for coming, no problem. Here's the, what I was telling you about, I'll leave my Thanks. All right. Um, so in Russia, we had voices. Uh, Voice of America, uh, Radio Liberty, uh, Voice of Germany, BBC, and all Soviet Union. They all were talking about the end of Soviet Union. They were against communists. And sometimes they were given something neutral, but sometimes it was right, right to the topic, trying to break the Soviet empire.
and it was lasting for the whole length of like as soon as radio was invented for the whole length until prehistoric of 1989 and uh, 1990. So what I'm saying, these voices were very much like channelings. Uh, they were they had very clear agenda. The radio liberty was officially funded by CIA and um, the Congress of, of of the United States and. Sometimes they said thing, the truth which was hidden in the Soviet Union, and uh, Soviets were uh, jamming that. They had special towers, and soldiers were working on these towers, and this, uh, radio towers kind of send a white noise to jam that signal from uh, voices of, um, of foreign nations. And uh, when, when the, some message was jammed, it meant that it was real, it was truth. And the whole Soviet Union was founded on, on the lies and secrecy. And the main reason it fell apart was because that secrecy was broken by these voices from, from, from outside. And uh, now the whole Earth empire, the whole Earth um, um, Illuminati, I guess, control is based on secrecy. And these voices of channelers, uh, of channelings, again, are exposing the secrets. And, and uh, Everybody, I think, sees that uh, this 99% movement and things like that, that the secrecy is kind of, and with the internet, is falling apart, and uh, the secrets are coming out, and the whole uh, thing, uh, the whole construct based on lies and secrecy is kind of falling apart. Now, is it good or bad? We don't know, because, again, as, as in Russia, um, and, as, and now, that, that, that system worked for, for, for quite a while, for thousands of years. Uh, the whole uh, control-based mentality worked, and now it, uh, it might fall apart, but we don't have alternative. We don't know if alternative works well, but that's that we're still moving to, towards that thing. So channelers. So that's a nice um, movie named uh, Tuning In. Um, I really like it. Uh, it, uh, it has five channelers, including Bashar. That's where from I learned about Bashar. And um, uh, one of them, I think this one, um, a crayon. He doesn't speak strangely. He speaks like normal human, and he says that uh, that's what that's because he receives his uh, downloads before the before the presentation, and then he can can talk himself. He just knows what to say. Others are a little strange, but um, again, the, the the kind of speaking is not is not um, indicative of uh, truth. Truth uh, that it is true, child. But I tend to believe many of them. Uh, I like Barbara Marciniak, uh, uh, Bringer of the Down, and it's one of the oldest um, teachers, teachers of the Pleiadians. It gives a lot of truth. Um, Patricia, Patricia Corey and Alfred Weber. Alfred Weber just recently uh, founded Ex University in uh, Vancouver, Canada, and I wrote to him, and he was kind enough to answer, and uh, I want to teach there. So, I mean, you don't have to try, uh, maybe, maybe there will be like sessions or conference or things like that, or you can teach online, so, so we're interacting about that. And Patricia Corey is a very nice channeler who, again, wrote several nice books. Uh, I like Brad Johnson, especially because he channels uh, Adronis from the same civilization as Bashar is from Sasani, so we have two representatives of the same civilization, and they talk similarly and about similar things. Now, the low one, Carl Ruckert, is one of the main channel sources, very clear and clean and well controlled. So we have lots of channelers. And they give a lot of advice. So uh, specific advice of it is from it is about healing. So there is, in a specific advice how to heal, there is nothing very unusual. We, they just highlight what we already know. That's one, one of the messages. It's not the main message of the extraterrestrials when they channel to us. It's not the main message. The healing is not the It's one of the most uh, required ones, but it's not the main thing. The main message is about, I guess, ascension and uh, about them want being one, with them wanting to be invited. I guess these are main messages. They want us to like them. And every civilization advertises itself and says that they are our ancestors, and they helped us in the past, they created us, and that's why they want to be part of our family, physically. Uh, now, 
uh, again, they are from higher density. We are third density, they are fourth density. When it comes to dimensions, it's a more mess. We have third dimension, they are fifth dimension. We uh, jump over dimension. Or if we count our time, it, we are in the fourth dimension, three dimensions, and time, four dimension, and then sixth dimension. So that's why it's less mess when they talk about density. So fourth density comes from previous book, Carla Rupert, and that's well, well documented. So Bashar civilization, graduates now from their four density and the fifth density. And Bashar says that they and us are linked. So when they do their jump, we do our jump. So, so they go from fourth to fifth and lose physicality. They become angels, non-physical angels. And we go from third to fourth and become physical angels. We kind of retain the bodies, but gain much of the angel properties. We are barely visible to Bashar. He sees us as vibration, and he is more of etheric body and less of physical body. To communicate to us, they have to really restrict themselves, really kind of lower their vibration, become more grounded to be able to see us and communicate with us. One thing which we, that many sources, including raw material, high strangeness, Bashar, Yadians, talk about chakras. So they, uh, but they don't say anything that is, is not yet known in human healing. So chakras, we have chakra system, there is a crown chakra, there is a base chakra, the energy flows from above and goes down and we kind of have uh, this energy coming in different uh, chakras and each of them is responsible for specific function and when a human becomes more advanced there are e extra chakras up there. Uh, what they are highlighting, especially Pleiadians, they remind every time, but not only Pleiadians, that remember that Earth is alive. Earth has its own geophil, geophil, biophil. And when you do meditation in your chakras, ground yourself to earth and especially to the core crystal of the earth. So that's, in their meditations, they all, all kind of remind that send your, in your imagination all the energy down to core crystal of the earth. So earth is a big part of their message. So I guess learning energy medicine from extraterrestrial, that's one of the main messages that you get. Think about the earth, think about her health and your health being very tightly. Um, uh, meditations, very many channelers do meditations, guided meditations. Even Bashar, who is quite aggressive, his meditations are also quite aggressive. I don't trust him when he does meditation, but he also does it. It's a decent job. Um, they all remind about fear, the source of dysfunction and, and, and pain. So fear is the main source. Uh, importance of ethereal body, many of them um, uh, remind me of that, that our DNA in the ethereal body is important. Now, specific devices about depression. First thing that Bashar says about depression is get over it. It's your choice to be depressed or not. It's, you have free will, you can decide what you choose. It's, if you're stuck with depression, it's firstly and primarily because you choose that something with where are you, where you are, is negative. And it is only because of your judgment, of your belief, what you have is bad. For example, you can breathe. And it's kind of, you take it as granted. But if you are down there under the ocean with a breathing apparatus, a breath is a joy. And the ability to breathe is just surprisingly uh, comes as, as a big gift. So the fact that you have feeling pain and alive can be considered a gift or can it be considered being depressed. It depends on where, where you want to get and what do you, what do you expect and what you get. That's, that's the disbalance for depression. And it's all, it's all about timing. I want something and I don't get it. That's why I'm depressed. Uh, that's the first thing. And he says, just change your definition. Change and um, immediately depression goes away. It's only because of your judgment of the situation you are depressed. Uh, second thing is it's, of course, it's a sign of change. It's normal for humans to become sad and depressed. And he, they, he said, we name depression, not depression, we name it compression. You expand when you're going up, and when you are about to change, you collapse, you go inside, you become separated and distant from outside. 
that's your sign of change. Before going into the next phase, you have to collapse and kind of condense into a point, and then you expand again in a new direction. It's it's never up and down, up and down, Bashar. So it's always up, and then it's a spiral. You go down, and it's a new how is it turn of the loop. All right. So that's about the pair. schizophrenia. Sometimes he says you have multiple beings in one body, and it's permitted. Sometimes they kind of cannot handle themselves and it, it becomes trouble, but really multiple souls are allowed to live in one body. Sometimes it's uh, one soul fragmented and then uh, cohesion between fragments of the soul is, is, uh, is, is what is uh, therapy for schizophrenia. And uh, in one of the worst cases he recommended that movement which kind of would bring into uh, alignment two parts of the soul and also some fragrances and some music to help the soul to feel, at least for some period of time, to feel as one. So for him, schizophrenia, at least from his perspective, is a fragmenting of the soul. Addictions. Um, again, he says it's um, detoxification is helping very much for any addictions. Uh, and then redefining beliefs. He says, if you're addicted to food, sweets, tobacco, alcohol, sex, whatever, um, you, uh, it's all because you define that it is good for you. Maybe you, on the, on, you because you are we are fragmented uh, consciousness, on one part of our consciousness we believe it's bad for us, on another part we think maybe it's, it's, it's good for me. So just redefine it, become integrated and making a decision that you want, not fragment, that, that helps with addictions. He also says, if you really decide that um, it's not part of me, it's not what, what I am, your past will change. I mean, that's I guess is a little too um, esoteric for, for now, but but uh, the past is defined by, by, by the present. That's his teaching. Back pain. Uh, someone was asking Bashar about back pain, and he says, back pain. Uh, we, we know that from from just intuitively that's um, that's too much load on, on you, and it's um, understanding of lack of support. Why do you decide that you're not supported? He says, every one of us is fully supported. If you're here, alive, uh, that means that, that you're supported. That, he says, you're never alone. On the other side, there are beings, guides, always watch you. I mean, that's a scary thought. Whatever you do, you're being watched on the other side. And uh, just decide for yourself that you support yourself, and that kind of solves the back pain. For myself, if I have back pain, I always recommend Send emails that you cancel everything. You don't have to really cancel it, you just send emails. And that is a big remedy. You have low obligations. Just send, you know, I can't make it, I can't make it, I cannot make it. Back pain goes away, and then you kind of load on yourself slowly things back. Um, now, information hygiene. I believe that uh, obesity comes from loading ourselves with negative information, especially the news. And here the aliens, the Pleiadians, Bashar, and many others say, work on your information hygiene. You really don't want to take in all the junk. Make sure you don't, I guess, Russian TV is the first step. And um, just um, understand that we are bombarded with negative information which you don't have to, you don't have to take. Sometimes the work is just to process negative information, or just junk information. And when you at work process junk information, that all brings obesity. obesity. So, so understand that it's dirt, informational dirt sitting in your cells. Uh, voice. Someone was almost whispering when asking the question of Bashar. And he said, understand that you don't have to speak. You don't have anything to say. Why do you say something? And uh, I mean, that was rude, but but really, the, the woman didn't have anything to say. And when she was explaining her personal problems, it's lack, lack of trust and desire to control things when you don't have to control. In her family, she wanted to command and control, and that's why she lost the voice temporarily. If you let things go, trust other people, voice comes back. Luckily, today I have voice. I didn't have voice a few weeks ago. Uh, eyesight. Uh, I find that eyesight you don't need glasses all the time. Really, uh, without glasses, you're, without seeing the details, you're way better. And um, again, uh, Bashar uh, 
sometimes you do, but uh, but uh, it's not okay for, for people to be lo overloading themselves with vis visual information. <coughs> so, so that's again the inside, inside of Bashar was if you are taking away something, what they are taking away some property thing, maybe you don't need that. Maybe it's a sign that that you have to restrict yourself in this way and turn another way. Um, uh, one of Bashar's advice was, I know that's so trivial, but it, he pronounced it quite well. He says, you need more oxygen. Your main problem in, the, in current state in the United States, you don't have enough oxygen. Oxygenation is the first problem you have to breathe. And most of the channelers, when they start, channels, when they start talking about health, say breathe, 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 breathe more. Hydration, drink more. Part of the hydration is your cells just don't take uh, water. It has to be clean water and you have to help them take the water. Sometimes it's mineral, sometimes it's something else. But um, in one of the other advices, Bashar mentioned cayenne pepper, hot pepper, in most natural form, it helps cells open, uh, help vessels open. So more stuff, more um, nutrients come when you use hot pepper. So I mean, moderate. Uh, exercise, toxins, uh, he says, uh, you're getting most of the toxins with uh, with the meat, so lighten the diet. It's not bad for eat meat, but but really at the current stage, if you're not dying from hunger, you don't need, don't have to eat meat. Uh, lighten in the diet. He says now we don't eat any, uh, at all, and you're coming to the stage when energy is coming, and now coming more energies, so the. Uh, you don't have to take it with food. You can take energies other ways. Uh, reduction of stress. I mean, that's obvious, and he's, he gave my much advice there. Now, uh, let's talk about Western versus holistic medicine. So, ask your doctor is the slogan of Western medicine, and my, my take is question your doctor. Uh, really, you have to become an expert in your condition. Don't trust your doctor. The doctor... Uh, really not representing themselves, they are representing the institutions, and the institutions want you to buy drugs and services. So you might trust your doctor, but you, because he represents the institution, you're in trouble. Uh, institution is responsible, is a slogan of Western medicine, and alternative slogan, own your health. It's really, you can really take uh, anyone in, uh, uh, responsible, you really have to uh, take control of your health. So sometimes it is a balance. Uh, if you refuse to take certain steps, they might avoid your warranty. But, but really, sometimes uh, you have to take alternative opinions and, 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 and take control. Disease uh, can cause uh, that. Uh, disease has a cause. Uh, OK, drug, drugs can heal. So the, the main take home message is that some drugs can be used in short term, but almost no drugs can be taken chronically. If you take something chronically, it's, uh, you, you, it, it's, it's not right, it's not right. I guess um, that's more my, my opinion than uh, the opinion of extraterrestrials, but I wanted to just give you one more model. So, so that would be the holistic uh, idea. So, so imagine this. Right, so that's kind of some system, holistic system. And Western medicine says that uh, it's supposed to be like that, but that's kind of in the disease state. So uh, we're supposed to do this to bring it in the wrong proper state. But really, if uh, if it's like warped, the whole system works in one way, and you need to unwarp it in a, in a proper way, you can treat it from state of Western medicine, and you can treat it from state from point of uh, alternative medicine, Eastern medicine. So any any push kind of converts one state to another. Uh, I guess that's a nice model. You understand, right? So so uh, the same final condition of sickness can be converted to condition of health from any side. And sometimes it's spiritual, sometimes it, it is uh, uh, used drugs. But uh, really the drugs can be used only for a short time to get you from down up, and but you can't really sustain yourself on a high level with drugs because they can 
will drag you down. Drugs will drag you down. All right. Um, now, a big thing about extraterrestrial medicine, they also use surgery, that's for sure. Uh, especially on abductees, they implant things, they use surgery. So I can't say surgery is bad. I'm saying surgery is overused by Western medicine because Western medicine has only three modalities. You ask your doctor. Sometimes they sell you the diagnostics as a healing modality. It's not. They can find the cause, but healing, ways of healing are only three. Surgery, drugs, and physical therapy. And typical physical therapy is a good thing, but they rarely use it. That's all they, all they have. Alternative holistic medicine has natural remedies. And all channels, including the Bashar, say natural is good. If something grows on earth, it's given to you by, by someone to heal yourself. So natural good is good. Traditional Chinese medicine is an art which is thousands of years old. We have some traditional medicine practitioner, uh, practitioners in Rochester. Uh, their diagnostics is great and it's very different from Western. It's based on energy flow. They have herbs and I'm using these herbs and uh, I'm using the recipe which is thousand years old and it's, it works great. Uh, typically what they do, they take the herbs, boil them, do extracts just in the water and dry them down so you get an extract of seven, ten, eight uh, herbs and uh, you take it typically daily, it's teaspoon, two teaspoons, so about fifty dollars of traditional ch Chinese remedy is enough for about one and a half months. So, I don't know how, how much uh, many of you spend on drugs, but, but uh, money-wise, it, it, it's, it, it's worth it. I didn't find any good traditional Chinese herbal expert in, in Russia. There is an Indian uh, Vedic herbal uh, traditional uh, uh, specialist, but I didn't find any. So I'm using one from uh, Eagle <coughs> Herbs from California, and it worked great. Have so, you seen Sonam? See? Sonam Tarji. He no. does Ayurveda. Excellent. Right on Monroe Avenue. Yeah, her, yeah, that's, that's the one I was referring to, I just yeah. never saw him. All right, so traditional Chinese Vedic, Reiki, Qigong, energy works, all the same principle. Acupuncture, I, I did some of that. It hurts a little, but uh, if you're desperate, it, it works. It works for me great. Hypnotic regression, sometimes you get the disease disorder from past lives. Like, again, James Borg in his interview he says, at some point, he was hanged as a thief, and since then, uh, in his kind of life, his neck hurts. What can you do about that? Hypnotic regression solved that. And I googled in Rochester, we have about at least six practitioners advertising their hypnotic regressions. You come, they put you in a hypnotic state, record it on a CD, and then you get uh, the result. You learn about your abductions, past lives, and things like that, and they also can heal. Meditation, healing foods. I am big proponent of healing foods, and again, um, many channels uh, talk about it. Chiropractors are great. Uh, sound and light therapy. We have some sound therapy. It's it's it, it's very moderate. It, it doesn't do huge miracles, but it's it's one of the ways to to change the system, change the system. Um, and laser therapy. Uh, I highly recommend laser therapy. Is one, the one which you could use often, but, but it helps with pain relief and, uh, and reduction of inflammation. I already discussed the uh, extraterrestrial medicine, but uh, one thing, uh, again, uh, some things they can heal, some things are brought by karma, and some things are given to you because it's a message. They can your uh, guide and higher beings manipulate you one way or another and sometimes the disease is just the message to change one way or another. Sometimes you work too hard, sometimes you're afraid too, too much. So that's the message. Now, that's, uh, these are the two books which I really adore um, about the field. Um, the book by Lynn McTaggart and the Source Field Investigations by David Wilcox. I'm two-thirds into his source code investigations, and whatever I mentioned, the Russian uh, uh, energy researchers, he did better job than I, 
talking to them. He has Russian side. I guess he visited Russia. There is a lot of Russians supporting him. He wrote excellent review of Russian research on bioenergy. Um, I mentioned that. I mentioned that. I wanted to do a review of instruments, but um, I am not there yet. That's like what I mentioned. Okay, now conceptual advice. Uh, so there was specific advice. The whole, yes, conceptual advice is very different. Uh, th first thing is that uh, death is nothing to fear about. Death is just normal. Uh, the Western mistake, I guess, Western lie is that uh, you have to run very hard, work very hard, control things, <coughs> run away from death. And that's the whole, whole chorus of child message says it's not right. You're protected. You're here. You're guided. If you step in the wrong direction, you'll be helped. And uh, that's the message that uh, people ask Bashar, uh, what, how do you deal with death? Um, he says, if someone dies in our world, we celebrate. And that's the message we get from uh, many other sources. Uh, death is a celebration. It's just a transition. It's never, never uh, by chance. You never choose to die by chance. It's, it's uh, always under control. He says, that's a message from Bashar. Every one of you, I mean, no, only, many of you have died many times. You just don't know. When you die by mistake, you're given a choice to return or to stay there. And uh, in most cases, because you didn't finish your program, you didn't finish your contract, your plan, you are advised to come back and you choose to come back and the reality is modified in a way that you come out alive from some some a situation where you already died and many of us have accidents one way or another when we almost died and by miracle we were saved and nothing happened nothing bad happened uh, an abductee uh, here i probably should mention a couple of experience from abductees they get more of that prop ability of Manipulate the reality. The one of the abductees in Rochester, she describes an accident which happened two times with witnesses. She was driving and somehow the truck was driving over her car. And the first time and second time, the truck just passed through her car without touching. She was kind of jumped on the highway and she saw the dirt coming from the wheels, the truck going through the car, and it was behind, now it's in the front, and her car is all right and well, and first time she was very surprised, and second time she already used to that, and her passenger was very surprised and said, yeah, that happens, that happens to her, so that happened two times. Another abductee in that one of the books I mentioned, uh, uh, she was, uh, uh, ice on ice and the car slipped and jumped on from the bridge and fell down she died she was uh, taken somewhere advised to come back so she discovered herself on the side of the bridge uh, alive and well and that car was all jumped but but uh, somehow they were on the highway um, uh, alive both of the passengers and then other cars slipped and then hit them again, and she was falling in the, in the, from the bridge. Again, she would die, but somehow something happened. She was, she landed up on like just few few or you know, small distance above the the gap, and she survived. But she had to lose her legs, so she asked the extraterrestrials if they did so many miracles if they, they can uh, uh, keep her leg and. Uh, she kept the leg, and uh, mm. the operation for about the removing of the leg was cancelled. So it was like a series of miracles, and um, some of them you take on uh, another dimension or, or other world. It's like the death world of death is, I guess, field dimension, uh, field density. So somewhere there, and some of that is just caused by extraterrestrials. Um, partners. Um, Reincarnation. So we reincarnate. That is the main message from everywhere. Uh, reincarnation 
is a, a, a center of Buddhism and Hinduism. Uh, Judaism uh, acknowledges reincarnation. Uh, many rabbis did, uh, write a lot about reincarnation and it's part of uh, Judaism. Not well known, but Kabbalah for sure is uh, respected. Christ in current edition of the Bible mentions reincarnation. Not in this word, but he mentions that this was based in the past life. That's what he mentions. Uh, this person was this person about uh, uh, John the Baptist and things like that. So it was edited out of uh, the Bible in early stages like this, um, fourth, fifth century, but it was part of the Gnostics and uh, so it was a big part of uh, culture and it was removed. Why was it removed from Western culture? I guess to make the life more of a drama. If you know that you reincarnate, you don't have a drama. You, uh, but if you live only once, the, and then there is a, or the predator, uh, the, the, uh, the hell, then, then you're more scared. So to, uh, to, to, to make us fight for our lives, uh, uh, reincarnation was taken away. So all channelers uh, confirm the reincarnation. Uh, next source which I mentioned is past life regressions. People come to learn about their past lives, and Michael Newton he wrote a couple books. One is Destiny of the Souls, and another one is Something of the Souls. I forget. Um, absolutely beautiful books, and um, where he just collects information about past lives and about life between the lives. Souls know for sure when people are in regression, uh, he is able to talk to the soul, they know for sure that there is reincarnation. And there is a lot of structure to this information. Uh, one of the things we know is that we carry our partners from one life to another. And uh, that is a strange paradox. We choose our partner between many, many people. And we think that's it, our choice. And when we end up in relationship, we might not even know, but people who do regressions know that that is a partner who we had as a son, sister, enemy in past lives, uh, husband. People change sexes, but uh, the partner's kind of... So how does it happen? It's, it's a paradox. Somehow we are manipulated. Sometimes it's like you already make a decision, no more of that, and something changes and you get in the relationship. That things like, I guess we are manipulated, but there is more than that. So somehow we make a decision to... Uh, there is, I guess, some also some, some resonance. Another thing about souls, they strive for excellence. We don't understand it, but they come here to take lessons to grow spiritually. And they go from, as Michael Newton explains, from white color to purplish color. So they have grades and they go seven layers, at least in, in, in all, um, among his patients, he had souls from first to fifth grade. And the, uh, they mentioned sixth grade and seventh grade, or more purplish in color. Um, so the souls strive to progress and uh, graduate and not incarnate anymore. So that is aligned with uh, Eastern teachings. Um, so why do they do that? We don't understand. Somehow for them it's given, and I don't even question that. Some souls decay, some souls start high, and then they kind of sin and become more degraded than any kind of recycle, but that's where it's very rare. Uh, we have guides, we have, like I said, one or two guides at least. Um, free will paradox. Um, up there, there is very little free will. There is some, apparently, but um, here we are made, ma we are made to make choices daily and hourly. We choose, and very often we choose things which are very important. So somehow this reality is designed to force us to make free will decisions uh, while we are being manipulated and guided. And especially uh, one thing, uh, by, 2000, by December 2012 we are said whatever we decide now will lead to the same result no matter what we choose, which is very strange. It's like the, December 2012 was already designed, and whatever path we choose now doesn't really change the outcome picture, which is 
another miracle thing which we learn from many sources and apparently it's many physical people take it for you um, one medical explanation which I think is very critical is um, brain is not storing information we don't store the information on our brain brain stores the references and the information stored elsewhere that is sort of confirmed but by some uh, some um, science too uh, no not mainstream science but basically um, we store a resonance pattern so when we need to activate certain memory we activate the resonance which retrieves the memory from elsewhere sometimes uh, organ transplants with some organ get part of memory of the diseased person and they learn something or they, they just get some information so so channel sources clearly say brain is only uh, an instrument to retrieve the memory uh, from elsewhere uh, Akashic Records is a storage of all uh, human knowledge and uh, Edgar Cayce is said to, to he didn't channel entities typically he channeled something from Akashic Records. He looked up in Akashic Records the information and it came to him. So part of our health is outside of the body, etheric body and other bodies. Uh, Bashar said that uh, chakra is a human vortex. I misspell it. And uh, earth vortex is, is a, a chakra of the earth. And the difference between human chakra is in human chakra the energy comes in. In Earth chakras, the energy goes out, but uh, the Earth is conscious and alive, and, uh, and we are and we function very similarly. Um, I skip the cancer. Uh, I guess cancer immune to brain. Well, I, I, I did a lot of research on cancer, mainstream research, and close to mainstream. And light therapy. I'm publishing now the paper on light therapy of cancer. It didn't it didn't heal cancer, but it was important to show. It was a good try and it was important to show that light therapy doesn't activate cancer. So we had mice with tumors. And what we noticed is uh, first mice do the surgery on themselves, they chew all the tumors on themselves. And in half of the cases, just cutting off the tumor is uh, on the surface is enough to, for tumor to not to grow again. So surgery for cancer seems to, to work decently for mice, so it should work for humans as well. And another thing is uh, just understanding the immunity of cancer. We have lots of seeds of cancer. Everyone carries, in our skin at least, uh, like per centimeter, maybe dozens of seeds of cancer. They encapsulated, uh, created by UV, the cell mutated, became cancers, and they sit in there happily because our immunity suppresses them. People who do organ transplants, they have immu uh, immunity artificially turned off by some drugs, and they start growing the the cancer tumors on the, on the back of the neck and here as, as mushrooms. That's like common thing, common knowledge. So the lesson is that immunity is important for cancer. So the cells are not the cause, they are similar. The immunity which fails to repress them is the cause of cancer tumor growing. So when a cancer clone, a certain selfish modification, mutation of cells starts multiplying, it's not because they are bad, it's because our immunity fails. And the immunity, by the way, are controlled by the brain, which doesn't remember things, but still is an instrument. So immunity is in, in a very tight connection in the brain. All the nodes which carry immune cells, lymph nodes, are sitting around the body and in the bone marrow, and they're all innervated by the central nervous system and are controlled by the brain. So it's all... Uh, the whole system and the cancer starts, I understand, very often from the this, 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 um, disorder in the etheric body, then it propagates through the central nervous system and only then it's, it's a failure of immunity. So when asked during the interview, the, the lady who is an alien healer, like interacting with aliens, uh, how do they heal cancer? She asked them, and she answered, they, they look for the cause, and finally they look for the, for the cause in the thinning body. So. But they can do surgery for sure. They can do cell replacement therapy as well. Um, 
All right, machine, just to mention, that's uh, one of the repressed technologies, and there is many more. I didn't do much research, but I want to get in touch with other wonderful uh, machines and instruments, which we have said that aliens kind of whisper the answers to the researchers, so we have to be ready to, to learn that. Um, I will skip the whole page on one, I guess. Biology of Ascension. Um, they black is wrong. Oh, okay. an hour wrong. Okay. It's pointing at your neck. Yeah, we need to leave. I need to leave. Okay. Um, so I have 10 minutes. I'll wrap in 10 minutes. Um, but you, you can leave if you like. No, no problem. So the whole biology of ascension. We are ascending. We are already ascending. The energies are changing. Bashar says that. Ascension is already happening. Uh, December 2012 is uh, the point where we are going down, starting going up. It's the point where, I guess it will be the lowest point, but uh, he just defines it as uh, multiple, I guess I will show the picture, uh, multiple, uh, this one. yeah, uh, multiple uh, lines of fate come together and the point of December 2012 is predetermined and after that we continue. So his predictions are quite slow and optimistic. He says that 300 years in the future they see us fully integrated, open uh, galactic society and we retain much of our current structures, some sort of culture, some sort of economics, some sort of production. We are open, we invite um, aliens to live with us and we travel to other worlds. We supervise ascension of other worlds and he even names uh, who is next, so we'll be aliens for them, UFOs for them. Uh, 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 the year 2015, three years from now, everybody on Earth will know for the fact that aliens exist and, I guess, visiting. Plus minus two years, he said. But uh, so th three years only to, to full uh, disclosure, I guess. Uh, official contacts: uh, 2023, 25, 27. Uh, full uh, opening, uh, basically opening of the uh, Earth to uh, the aliens. It's 2033 and 2015. Uh, the Earth becomes official member of, um, I guess, interstellar alliance and uh, other alliances. Um, here, uh, the physical people, so on the left there are channels, Sheldon Idol, Michael Quincy, and on the right are physical people who are, I guess, in the know. Um, um, this, the, the, these two people, um, Bill Brock Bader, Bill, Bill, the, Bill Cobb. Jerry Martin has been pulled I am in communication somehow with, uh, with the White Hats. White Hats are representative of the Galactic Federation. Until now, they were kind of mysterious. Nobody really spoke to them. Nobody really, uh, they never surfaced. We knew that some negotiations undercover behind the closed doors are there, but we never see any physical representative. Now, these people at least have been called Brock Brader, Martinez, David Wilcock have been called by representative of Whiteheads who are playing down here on the ground doing dirty politics. Um, basically for disclosure, uh, financial reform and they say that most of the agreements have been made in the last half a year. That's the main message. Chandler was saying that Wait at once, but basically whatever happens up there, uh, it's really hard hard to trust until physical people confirm that. So, so that's the main message. So, um, it looks like positive changes already happened. We are on timeline one. Basically, we are, we made it, uh, and uh, and in 2012, uh, what will happen? I don't know. Uh, uh, Bashar says not, not much will happen. You will better notice. That's what Bashar says. Uh, things will move slowly, but you will see that things will start improving in December, uh, after December. Uh, uh, the end of quarantine, thinning of the veil. The veil will thin, and the veil 
protecting us from the knowledge from psychic abilities, telepathy, or uh, seeing other beings. <coughs> uh, I have been directly contacted by uh, feline humans. If anyone knows anything about feline humans, I would be interested to learn more indirectly, but uh, it's kind of very interesting for me right now. So these beings who are on other realms, other planes, they are showing more often to us. Now I did some research and um, I don't see that psychic abilities of humans on average uh, improve. Basically there is a, a website, uh, Daily, Remote View Daily, where people uh, guess an image and then next day they, they show the, uh, shown an image. And, uh, Lately, the last few months, the, the psychic abilities went down on average. But hopefully something will change. Uh, another uh, channel, it showed up, it kind of was, it started talking on, uh, a physical being started talking on uh, Wilcock show, the previous one. Wilcock Cassidy interview. Uh, and then uh, it's, it, his name was um, anonymous. And then uh, and he said, uh, the next 20 years will be tough, but after 20 years, uh, we'll be all uh, in good shape and shining in rainbows. So that confirmed the Bashar's prediction. So 20 years, like um, 32, 33, when uh, we will become fully open. Um, biology of ascension. Um, so the, the, when we know most about the great because they have been abducted the humans. They don't necessarily represent uh, the aliens. They are mostly interested in us. They are in contact with us because they were abducted humans, but, but they are certainly from four densities. So from uh, Bashar, who is a gray, a gray human hybrid, and from the grays, we can learn about four density, but they are not represented. They can exclude Many other beings, like Pleiadian Syrians, are more like humans, and also higher density, fourth or higher. And um, uh, they all are telepathic. And they are uh, uh, a good example how they behave in, uh, with time. So Bashar's, Bashar has a wife. Uh, again, they made a child without um, without physical sex, but. He was introduced to his wife. She also he is a, an expert on a specialist on first contact, and she is an expert on first contact. And when he speaks to Daniel Anka to audience, sometimes audience invites Bashar's wife, whose name is Anime, to uh, to speak, and she kind of comes through the channel and speaks. And once she was invited, and Bashar says that uh, she can't come because uh, she is uh, now. Uh, in negotiations with another third density race and uh, normally she would split and be in negotiations with a certain in negotiation and come through each other because they can split in, uh, in multiple kind of copies of themselves but they would consider it impolite so she wouldn't do that so that's very indicative he also he always uh, mentions that uh, for them time is different now uh, symptoms of ascension, uh, starting from 11, 11, 11, um, I started hearing the, the high-pitched tone in my, in my ears, uh, and it never stopped uh, since then. It can be uh, some disorder, but it can also be something, uh, a sign of, uh, of, uh, of something, uh, like ascension thing. Uh, Sylvia Brown mentioned that her, her uh, spiritual guide talks like a chipmunk. So then what I hear is like a cheap market, I guess. Now I was said, uh, I was said, uh, through a psychic, that no, no, it's, you're, you're looking in the wrong place, uh, that they are talking to us in a very low vibration. It's like uh, infrasound, which you can hear. And that corresponds to what Bashar says, that uh, you know, we're saying higher frequency, but, but really, are they really higher frequency or lower frequency? Because he said that we are seeing the, the reality with sort of frame rate, uh, billions of frames per second. It's our reality is not continuous, it's uh, uh, layers per second, billions of layers per second. And they are skipping, skipping frames. So their frequency may be, may be lower than ours. So maybe higher level beings may be actually lower level beings in terms of frequencies. When they say they're higher frequency, maybe they're kind of making themselves too pretty. So uh, ascension, um, 
they say that our genome and we are designed, we are ready for the century. And then below in biology, we know that it can't really be that simple because if, if we have the facilities for telepathy and for telekinesis and things like that, uh, and we are not using them, then we'll be decaying. Uh, in evolution, things decay. So how is it possible that we are all capable of ascending, capable of tele uh, telepathy and uh, kinesis and premonition, but we are not using that? And uh, my take is that we probably are using that in a sleep. So there is, we are practicing, so it doesn't die, that ability. But when we sleep, we use that, that capacity to be on higher levels. But when we wake up, we kind of have it have it blocked. And Pleiadians say that the way of blocking it is through jamming frequencies. I don't think these are physical frequencies, but I think there are some non-physical etheric frequencies where in our artificial reality, the, our communication capacity are being jammed, and psychic somehow can circumvent the jamming frequencies. But a possible scenario is that in December 2012, this blockage will be just stopped. They will stop broadcasting these frequencies and uh, we'll just find them ourselves in a new reality where we can see things because just there is less noise. Maybe they will, I mean, if I was you know, there smart, we probably would do it stepwise. Bashar says that they're sitting now above the earth, cloaked, and his ship is broadcasting Schumann frequencies, which is 7.5 hertz. Uh, electromagnetic physical waves, and they kind of keeping the Earth on pacemaker slow in the ascension of the Earth, so we can catch up. And against Allendale, uh, 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 another anonymous speaking to Wilco, said exactly that: that we have enough time. Uh, the ascension will take as long as needed. There are divine orders and deadlines which can be extended as needed, uh, so we can uh, make it smooth. So that's, I guess. The main message, and I'm done. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Yes, I wanted to mention that.